Hey, what's up guys on YouTube? This is 3D Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And this is part two of our Venetian blinds tutorial. And in part one, we just built the glass and the metal framing and the surrounding. But now it is time to build these Venetian blinds. Where do I have it? Yes, we want to build something like this, right? And I think there is also some real life reference. So you can see these elements, they are slightly bent and they have like these strings going inside of here and these blinders. Overall, this is not too complicated and the result we can achieve to play with our light is just amazing. All right, so let's just start in Cinema 4D. And just a quick reminder, of course, if you want to have the whole training with the whole interior lighting, modeling, uh, materials course, where you learn the whole stuff, Patreon is the right place for you. I will also share with you the knowledge how to build these kind of renderings here. So just look how beautiful this lighting is. And I think if you just want to learn more of the good stuff, Patreon is the right place for you. Enough of the advertise, let's start in Cinema 4D. Uh, we built the framing and the glass, now we built the Venetian blind, okay. And therefore I would say you just grab a plane and we have to decide how wide the Venetian blind should be. So let me just show you what I did here. So one of them is just like one window wide and the other one is going from here to here. It's hard to see, but uh, just believe me, uh, you can see, for example, this one is going over one, two, three windows and I just built several variations. This time, why don't we just go for a width of, let's just say two windows here. So let's just go inside of the segments. We don't need so many and I just make it smaller and this seems to be almost correct. Go to the top view and go to the Goro shading, sorry, to the Goro shading lines and just turn it into an editable object. And now I just go there and you don't have to be super precise, but I just put it almost in the middle here and put this one to somewhere here. Okay, that's good. Make it smaller here. This will be the smallest piece of our Venetian blind. The single blinders so to say. I just compare it to this human and this feels to be the correct size. All right cool. So now I think we have to subdivide it just a little bit and I guess the first step we should do is to cut in some holes where we can put in these uh, ropes or strings. Uh, I don't know what's the right word but let's just say we want to make this one into different segments. So MF should be the edge cut tool. So put this one to free. I think this is almost enough. So just go to select these ones. Just put it a little bit more out. I think this seems to be a good placement. I just go back to select all of the free cuts. MS just bevel it. Be sure you have no subdivisions otherwise you get something like that. So this seems to be good but I think we can half this value. So this can be really thin. I think that's okay. Hold down STRG while you go to the poly mode. So now these ones should be selected. Hold down I to just inner extrude it. I think this is a good thickness but the cut shouldn't start so close to the border. So let me just scale this one down and put it more into the center. This could be a good value. So just kill it. Let me just check it. Let's put a blue material for example on it. So you can see this will be our indent for the strings. I think this seems to be a good, a good value here. All right, so let's continue. So let me show you the reference once more. So I just open my pure ref here and you can see, do I have some real life reference? Yes. You can see these ones, they are slightly bent. So why don't we put that detail into our mesh? All right, therefore select your object. And I think by now you know some basic tricks here. Oh, some arrow appeared. Okay, so let me just go back to here. All right, I guess I just moved my polygons. So this is better. Now hold down UB to again make a ring selection of your polys. I had a good selection here, I just ruined it. So. Why don't you just go to a rectangle selection? Just go here and select all of these ones. You can say tolerance selection, of course. Let me just go through here. So I have all of these ones selected. Let me just double check it. That's good. That seems to be fine. All right. So now I just want to give them more subdivisions. MF, 
you know the edge tool by now so put these ones to maybe seven and let's just cut it i think this is looking good all right to be honest maybe the subdivision could be a little bit problematic if you want to bend it so let's just try it and let's see if we have errors otherwise we have to adjust this a little bit but for now let's just put a bend into our and just call it blinder the bend let's just say fit it to parent let's just give it a slight thickness here so we can at least see it let's just put a strength to it so i guess i just go to this axis rotate it a little bit and you can see i will get some rotation values here so let me just put this one to 90 put it to 90 go inside of it let's say make this one unlimited let's put it over here so let's just try to match the middle of it so put it here into the middle let's get out of it and I think, I mean, it's okay. So I was thinking we would get arrows here so you can see a little stretching in the polygons. It's not so obvious. So, so maybe we can get away with it. I think the strength is way too much. So put it to 30. This will be just a minor bend here. So put it to 40. I think that's good. And we also want to keep the length of it. And I would say this is a nice element. So let's go to the blinder. Let's say current state to object. Let's just make this one invisible. And now we have our blinder, which has this beautiful angle in it. Perfect. All right. And you know what? Since we want to have a really beautiful model here, why don't we try to select these polygons here? Sorry, not polygons. They are points. Let's go to the outer four edges. All right. And I just say MS to bevel it ever so slightly and i just give it some subdivisions somewhere around here that's enough okay so this is really a minor detail but you can see it just looks more believable okay i think the inner part could also have a bevel so just go there and now of course you select these points these two plus these ones and go to the other ones and hold down shift while you're selecting them and just add them to your selection now we have eight points perfect go over there now if the math is correct it should be 12 ms to bevel it bevel it and do something like that for example okay so this is really minor but i think it just adds a little bit to the quality all right and i would say why don't we just go into the poly mode hold down d and just give it a slight extrusion let's see from the side so this can be really thin so put it to 1.5 let's just double check it so yes this can be really thin i guess we can also go to just a millimeter and i say this looks good just be sure you create caps okay so otherwise it will be open but now this is a good single element you can see it has some beautiful thickness to catch the light. And now I think it is time for some cloner action. Select the blinder. I think it would help if you just hold down Alt, select the cloner, select it. Now the cloner is in place. Now just say this one will be moving up with um, 10, for example. But I think we already introduced the problem. So now I can't rotate the blinder. Um, you can see that doesn't work. I can transform it here. But now I transform the whole element. I can go inside of here and this one will just incrementally add more of the rotation to the element. So this is not helpful and this is also not helpful. So I guess we just want to select a blinder, hold down Alt and let's call this one blinder, of course. And now you have in the hierarchy your blinder. And I think now you should be able to just rotate this one. All right, perfect. So that's what we want to do. But you can see the center of rotation is kind of off, right? So that doesn't make sense. So let me just check the model here and you can see the axis is totally off. So better go to axis center, all points executed. That is perfect. Let's just put it out of the null. Let's just hold down alt and make another null again. So now this will be a perfect rotation angle for our cloner. So put it back into the cloner and let's go inside of it let's just double check it all right that is awesome 
All right, so I would say we just zoom out a little bit. Let's give this one a bigger count here and let's put it to 30. And let's just say the, the distance is way too much. So put it to seven, that's better. Let me just check the rotation here. That seems to be good, okay. So this is almost what I want, right? Let's put it to an angle like this. Now they are perfectly touching. I think I just want to make it a little bit more uh, close, put it to six, do it again. I think I just want to have something like that with a slight overlap. I think this is believable to really darken the room. So this is already a good number. Now go into the cloner, put it up to, for example, 53, that's good. And I think this element is already working. Now let's just go into the blinder. Let's rotate it again. So of course you can play with it when you have your sunlight in action and then you have your different blinders here and you can play with however you want to give this one a light pattern into your room. Maybe you can also work with translucent or metallic materials here to play how the light will interact with your Venetian blinds. But for now, this is good for me. And I just call this one the resting ones. And I just say there will be like 10. All right, so this is my resting cloner here. I just put it down there. And these ones, of course, they will be rotated into an angle like zero. Okay, that's perfect. And they should be really close. So I guess this should be something just slightly above the thickness of these blinders. That is perfect. So this is just how many you want to add here. Of course, you can do the math correctly, but I just give this one like a 20 here. I think it's too much, but uh, just put it to 13. And I would just put this element here. Let's put it there. Okay, that's cool. And now I just want to put an, like a weight beneath it. So I think you just hold down Alt to have it in place. Uh, put the cloner out of it, of course. This is my cube. I just want to make it smaller. Give it like some arbitrary values here. So let's just make it editable. Make this one bigger. Just put it up to here. I think the element is too big. So make it smaller here. Now I just select both of these polys. And now I just want to extrude them up to there, for example. That looks good. All right, perfect go into the edge mode, MS, and let's just slightly bevel all of them. All right. And you know what, since this was such an unbelievable good technique, we just hold down Alt again, select the cube, put it there, put it out of it. So now it is in place, put it up here, make it smaller, make it wider, make it not so thick. Okay, that's good. And this is just our, like our box above it where all of them can come in to rest. So I would just say this will be here. Okay, that's good. And I guess this one can be just a little bit bigger. That's nice. I just put it into an editable object. Hold down I, inner extruded. Hold down D, put this one in, get rid of the caps. Just make a little box here. That is nice. I like it. All right, so we have a beautiful cube up here, but I think we can just make it a little bit better. So go to your layers, put a layer here, and uh, you don't have to give it a name really. Just solo it. Hold down UB for the ring selection. Go around to select these four edges. Okay, we can do the same for the inner part. Now we should have eight edges. That's perfect. MS. And now we just want to make this one a little bit more interesting. Give it something like that, for example. So this will catch up the light and this will just look more believable. Perfect. So maybe we should also make a loop selection here. UL, select these two, MS again, and just slightly bevel this one. All right, that looks just amazing. Okay, cool. So I think we almost have all the elements uh, working here. I just recognize some uh, little stuff. So let's just make this one a little bit smaller. Let's put it to somewhere here. So this shouldn't be so prominent. I think it's also too big in the height. Let's put it to somewhere around there. Okay, that's cool. And I think also the cube is offset. So 
go to this resting block. Okay, it shouldn't be, of course, in this hierarchy. So put it out of it, put it in there. Okay, cool. So now I think we just want to put some strings into it. Hold down Alt. Let's put it out of the hierarchy. Let's put the string over there. And just to easily see it, put a really vibrant color on it. Let's just go to, for example, like this red tone, put it onto the cylinder. Let's just put it there. Okay, let's just put it here. Let's get it over here. Let's make it really thin. So go to the radius 0.2, for example. Let's just check it. That seems to be almost good enough. Select the cylinder, turn it into an editable object. I just want to shortly put it onto a layer just to see it better. Okay, so I think I want to select the bottom points there, select all of them go to the axis center, move it to the selected points again. So you know this technique by now. Now we have the axis down here. Go back into your rendering and let's just easily put it over here. So just activate the lines again, put it here. So that seems to be good. Let's just double check it. Now it is going up to this point. All right, so let's just scale it from the bottom. Let's just scale it, put it up here. That's perfect. Let's go there and let's say we just want to duplicate it. Put one more here. That's good. Select both of your cylinders, select them. Let's just move them over here. When you hold down control, you will get a duplicate of it. Let's put it inside of this one. All right. Let's just hold down control and just duplicate it once more. Put it here and now think this is already working. All right, and you can see and these are basically all of the building blocks I have in my rendering. You have these strings here with the holes in our piece that go through it. Then you have the resting cloner setup there. The cloner setup here, you can put some arbitrary random rotation on it. Then we have like a weight block beneath it. And we have this piece where you can put everything into it. Of course, now you can put this way further to put some user data with Expresso on it. Maybe I will do this on my Patreon. I'm not sure yet. But to be honest, if you're like me, if you're like a fast modeler and you want to have a result really fast, then you just put all of the building blocks now into a null maybe put a name on it and just duplicate it or make instances with it and just change the rotation, for example. So you can see this one is more close. This one will give you more light into the room. And basically, this is all what I did here. And you can see that's exactly what I did in my rendering. So I just made different instances here, played with the rotation, of course. As I said, if you put everything into a clever Expresso setup, you could save yourself some minutes if you want to reuse this in other renderings, in other scenes, then definitely that's the way to go. All right, so maybe I will put the Expresso setup on my Patreon. I'm not sure yet. Of course, you can use your setup with a band to put this one also in curved rooms. All right, so really nice possibilities to light your room. And um, I think this technique here, the modeling is coming to an end. All right, guys, so this was the simple entry exercise here where we just built this framing and the Venetian blind. Of course, I will also show you how you can build more complex structures here uh, with this entry, with the stairs, with the shelf here, how you can light it, how you put plants into it, how you build light fixtures, uh, how you build uh, simple elements and all of the good stuff. So. Be sure to check the whole course. But other than that, I just hope you learned something here. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, just leave me a comment if you have questions. But now just have a powerful day. See you in the next training. Bye, guys.